The series opens up with a beautiful young girl, Zoe, who is a contestant on a reality TV show called The Match. When she's rejected by a man on the show, she gets really angry and starts breaking things on the set, calling the whole show fake. To her dismay, when she lets go of one of the doves in the cage, it poops right in her mouth. Someone from the crowd captures this footage and posts it online, ruining Zoe's reputation. The scene then fast forwards six months, and now Zoe is alone living in the mountains. She has cut off all social media and is living a peaceful life. One day, an earthquake-like tremor suddenly occurs, and water starts coming in through cracks everywhere. Afraid, Zoe rushes into her shed and grabs an emergency phone to call. She learns that there's a severe weather alert, suggesting people evacuate to higher grounds. Zoe walks outside, only to hear another crash and see more water that suddenly shoots up from the ground. Meanwhile, another girl, Amelia, is with her friend Genevieve at their college reunion party. They wonder if Zoe will join them. Amelia finds out about another classmate, Saskia, who's changed and is now donating tampons to women in need. On the other hand, Zoe follows her dad's advice and tries to reach the school driving her car. Amelia and another friend named Teresa continue talking at the reunion. When Amelia says she's leaving, Renee tries to convince her to stay a little longer. After a while, Zoe finally reaches Ridge Heights Catholic Ladies College and asks a woman outside where the emergency meeting point is. Inside the party place, Phoebe talks to Renee about their jobs, but the latter lies and says she's a doctor when she's actually a nail technician. Moments later, when Zoe walks in, they're all surprised. Zoe realizes that none of them know about the emergency. She tries her best and shouts loudly to explain what's happening, but the girls don't want to believe her. In the bathroom, Zoe tries to reassure herself that everything is okay. Right then, Amelia comes in to check on her, and Zoe blames her absence for the past six months on being off the grid. In response, Zoe playfully tricks Amelia into reminiscing about their past and convinces her to stay a little longer before walking out with her car keys. Outside, Zoe discovers that a duo, Tegan and Megan, are hanging out on a gazebo called the Fingering Bench. They start talking about a person named Laura Cunningham, and Zoe learns that Laura has passed away and there's a sad plaque in her memory. Out of nowhere, Zoe asks if there are stronger substances available because she wants to get high quickly. The girls then offer her pills, and Zoe takes them before returning inside, where they end up having a night-long party. Later on, Amelia attempts to retrieve her car keys from Zoe so that she can leave. However, Zoe refuses to hand it over, and suggests that Amelia should appreciate that this time she's saying goodbye instead of disappearing like before. They have a brief argument, and Amelia steps away. She then interrupts the music to inform everyone about an issue at the fingering bench. They head outside and discover that the gazebo, which Megan and Tegan were enjoying, has been submerged in water, with the two sitting on top of it, having no idea of their surroundings. Everyone goes back inside to figure out how to rescue Tegan and Megan. Surprisingly, Laura Cunningham, who they believe to be dead, shocks everyone by revealing that she is still alive. She suggests an idea to save the duo, but no one listens to her. Zoe then suggests using balls to help Tegan and Megan cross the water while Sandy is concerned about finding her lost bag. Amelia tries to get answers from Zoe, who claims she attempted to warn them about the flooding water. Later, the group successfully gets Tegan and Megan safely across the water, and gather inside to discuss the strange events. As they argue, a crack appears on the ground, and a hole forms beneath Zoe's feet. Amelia saves her from falling into the water, leaving them surrounded by rising water and nowhere to escape. In the next scene, we see Amelia busy making pancakes and taking some pills. During breakfast, Sandy can't stop crying, which annoys Genevieve. The power is out and there's no phone signal. Genevieve, behaving as a team leader, suggests they need a plan. Some think they should pick a leader, while others, like Saskia, believe in sharing responsibilities. Everyone is still upset with Zoe for not warning them about the flood, so Genevieve tells her to clean up the breakfast dishes. Genevieve then plans to check their food and water supplies, while a group prepares to row a boat to observe the outside conditions. During this, Zoe tries to talk to Amelia, but the latter declines and goes rowing with Saskia and the others. 
While rowing, Amelia remembers being told to leave the boat by Saskio when they were younger. Because of that incident, she hated being on the team. In the present, Amelia curses her past self and swims away, despite others trying to stop her. Meanwhile, Sandy desperately searches for her bag, but Genevieve reminds her that they need candles and torches, not a bag. Later, Amelia finds an electric toothbrush in the water and swims back to the island. She asks Renee for some Prolexoft, a kind of antidepressant, and they agree to keep it a secret. Outside, Amelia questions Zoe if she can operate the college radio station, and the latter believes that she can fix the radio, but not without power. Soon, Amelia finds Phoebe using the generator and turns it off, yelling at her for not taking their condition seriously. Phoebe doesn't believe her and thinks they'll be out of there tomorrow. In the following scene, Tegan and Megan search for a clipboard, but stumble upon a drawer full of alcohol and narcotics. Amelia and Zoe also manage to tinker with the radio equipment, but the generator abruptly shuts off. Afterward, when the group again tries to get Zoe to wash the dishes, the faucet doesn't work, and she gets sprayed in the face. She tells them the plumbing is broken, and they all laugh at her mishap. Right then, Saskia and Teresa return, and when Saskia shakes her head, Sandy realizes they're in trouble. Once everyone leaves, Amelia talks to Saskia and mentions they're running out of fresh food and water. In reply, Saskia apologizes for her past actions and the authority they've projected onto her, which she never asked for. Amelia suggests they need someone to take charge, someone assertive. Later, Saskia walks through the halls and witnesses chaos among the women. She interrupts Sandy, who is upset about the situation, and also helps Teresa with her IVF injection. After a while, when Sandy falls asleep, Saskia pushes her and the rowboat into the water. Zoe asks why she did that, but Saskia blames her instead, and claims it was her idea. She also suggests that Sandy is like a virus, and they won't survive if they bring her back tonight. After this, the two walk away from there. The following morning, Zoe and the group search for Sandy, but Saskia asks them to forget about her and instead focus on finding a way to survive the situation. Hearing this, Renee and the others become emotional, questioning whether they're giving up on everyone by prioritizing their survival. However, Genevieve is determined to keep looking for Sandy, believing that someone out there might be looking for them too. Saskia suggests implementing a mandatory hour for emotional release encouraging them to let their feelings out. She believes they won't survive if they keep it all inside. In a flashback, Amelia is told she won't be returning to the school and will be going home. Sister Bicky suggests Zoe help her pack, but Amelia declines, acknowledging that they're not really friends anymore. Back to the present, Saskia, acting as the leader, starts interviewing the women to discover their skills. She then divides the girls into two groups, the first one is Innovation and Research, led by Amelia. They are tasked with generating electricity. And the second one is Infrastructure and Development, responsible for digging toilets as the plumbing is not working. Teresa remains in charge of food, while Zoe is the student council representative. Eventually, Saskia gives the girls a pep talk and urges them to get to work. But Genevieve isn't happy with her role and wants to continue searching for Sandy. Seeing this, Saskia asks Zoe to convince Genevieve and reveal to everyone that Sandy left them in their rowing boat. Following Saskia's orders, Zoe tries to forge a letter in Sandy's handwriting and places it on a statue near the water. Meanwhile, Phoebe, Tegan, and Renee are too hungry to figure out how to generate electricity, so Amelia offers to find them food if they start working. Outside, Genevieve keeps searching for Sandy while Amelia shares her doubts with Saskia. She's not sure if they'll have the electricity issue resolved by tonight. Saskia advises Amelia to take her time, but makes it clear that their team won't eat until they find a way to generate electricity. When Amelia argues that this isn't the right way to motivate people, Saskia reminds Amelia that she was the one who wanted her to take the lead. Meanwhile, Zoe plants the letter, but finds a partially damaged ore in the water, which she needs to hide. On the other hand, Genevieve continues her search for Sandy and urgently needs a toilet. She cries around, searching for one, and eventually finds a functional one in the chapel's back room. Later, Zoe interrupts Saskia to report that their letter strategy has been planted, but she found a broken oar. 
In response, Saskia instructs her to make the ore disappear or face the consequences alone. Later, when Zoe attempts to deal with the broken ore, Amelia arrives there and pleads with her to ask Saskia to ease up on the nerds. To Amelia's dismay, Zoe refuses, leading to a heated argument. Amelia then accuses Zoe of being selfish, like she used to be. They argue about their past, with Zoe claiming that she tried to maintain their relationship and advises Amelia to stop blaming her for what happened. She thinks Amelia should just come clean about her reasons for being removed from the school, but the latter doesn't reveal the truth. Afterward, Amelia returns to the classroom, where Tegan is missing and Renee is doing Phoebe's eyebrows. She sits down and begins crying, explaining that they won't eat until they generate electricity. Hearing this, everyone gets motivated and begins reading books to find a way to generate electricity. The scene then shifts to the evening, when Amelia and her group have managed to turn on light bulbs for dinner. Right then, Megan and Tegan carry in a statue, which is holding Sandy's supposed letter. Without wasting any time, Genevieve reads the letter, which claims that Sandy found her purse and left it in a rowboat. Believing it, they toast to Sandy and Sister Bicky, who doubted the group's potential. As they sing the school's song, Zoe asks Laura about something she wanted to say earlier and steps away. Laura reveals that she's actually an electrical engineer, but no one listens to her. Later at night, Genevieve reads the letter alone while Amelia cries in her room and circles some words in it. On the other hand, Phoebe finds Sandy's handbag and shows it to Saskia, reminding her that Sandy wouldn't go anywhere without it. The scene then fast forwards by 44 days, where we see that the girls have managed to fight through the disaster with their teamwork. Saskia is still leading them, and she's doing a pretty good job at it. Zoe takes the radio to update the outside world on their progress, hoping that someone will hear them and send a rescue team. Meanwhile, Saskia has the group riding stationary bikes to recharge the batteries they collected from different parts of college. Once the batteries are charged, Phoebe is tasked with collecting them from each individual and providing them with an item they ask for. Their activities continue for days, but they get no response in return. One day, Genevieve questions whether using the battery's power for their personal use is worth it, and suggests that their priorities should be radio signals, protein, and rest. Saskia disagrees, emphasizing the importance of maintaining their appearance. Later, Saskia sits alone in her office and talks to a self-made mannequin. She mentions that she's been hearing a voice inside her for years and that it encourages her. Saskia doesn't understand how her ex-boyfriend who messed her up can also be the source of encouragement she needs. Right then, Teresa checks on Saskia and expresses concern about her earlier harshness towards Genevieve. Saskia tries her best to hide the self-made mannequin and Teresa offers to talk about anything. The next day, Genevieve refuses to cycle further, causing Saskia to warn her that if she doesn't ride, she won't receive any facilities. Amelia pleads with Genevieve to continue riding because they all depend on the batteries. However, Genevieve leaves, telling them to find her in the toilets when they're done being cowards. After she departs, the remaining girls also slightly protest Saskia's behavior. In response, the arrogant leader reminds them that she is the one who led them and built everything. Later, Zoe tells Teresa they need to leave before Saskia becomes a problem and shows her the boat she made to escape. Sadly, when she starts moving a basketball goal, it falls on Teresa's toe, injuring it badly. Saskia takes a look at it and assigns Phoebe and Renee to fix Teresa's toe. In the following scene, Amelia brings three batteries to Phoebe, but is told she needs two more to get her favorite narcotic. She then rushes to treat Teresa, where Renee accidentally amputates Teresa's toe instead of just the nail. Later, when Teresa is awakened, Phoebe and Renee claim the surgery went well and give her the severed toe before leaving. As Teresa panics, Saskia breaks down and admits that she might not be coping and handling everything smoothly. However, when an angry Teresa tells her to go talk to her therapist, Saskia turns selfish and tells her that dinner is due soon, and they need fish. Next, Renee asks Phoebe why she covered for her, and the latter explains that they need to appear privileged to avoid judgment from the others. Suddenly, Saskia enters and breaks a computer before putting Teresa's toe in Renee's mouth. She says she's done and goes to a private place to cry. 